Now the next example will be most educational. Plus 3 and minus 4. Can you guys guess the root of this equation? 1. Okay, I agree. Let's see if we can get it out of Tartaglia's formula. This will be most interesting. We have x equals square root, ah, oh, these are such small numbers, this will be a pleasure, 2 plus, we'll just figure out what that square root is, 4 plus 1. So 2 plus square root of 5. So the other term is, we'll have 2 minus square root of 5. Okay, so this is a little bit puzzling, because we expected to get 1, and we didn't get 1. But could it be that this is 1, despite how complicated this expression looks? Well, let's estimate. This is a little bit over 2, right? So this is a little bit over 4. So this, when you take the cubic root, it's still a little bit over 1. Okay, good. And this is a little bit less than 0. So when you take the cubic root, it's still a little bit less than 0. So something that's a little bit more than 1 plus something that's a little bit less than 0. So it's quite conceivable that this complicated expression is 1. But is that possible? Do you see how to turn it into 1? It actually is 1. If we did, if we had a calculator here, we're just we'll just be able to evaluate it and get 1.0, quite convincing. This was a problem that Tartaglia was facing in trying to establish the effectiveness of his formula. He came across an expression like this. I think he would probably do a numerical calculation to confirm that it's 1, and then he would scratch his head and think to himself, how do I actually show that it's 1? And then he would say, well, maybe this cubic root, I don't know how he would come up with this, but maybe this would occur to him. He's like, I'm looking at numbers that have, and especially through considering other examples, you know, like an integer plus an integer times square root of 5, or maybe more than an integer, a rational. He started thinking about the numbers of the type a plus square root of 5b. And he realized that these are fascinating numbers. Because, let's say a and b are rational numbers. So these numbers are no longer rational, he knew that. But what do they represent? For instance, if we were to take two numbers of this kind, and add them together, would we get another number from the same family? Would it be another number that's a rational plus square root of 5 times another rational? Is it pretty clear that it is? Well, if one of them is a1 plus square root of 5 b1, I'm not even going to write it down. It's one of those things that should not be dignified with being written down. And another number is a2 plus square root of 5 b2. I add them together, I get a1 plus A2 plus square root of 5, B1 plus B2. So this family of numbers is closed under addition. That's nice. What about multiplication? If I multiply two numbers of this kind, maybe I should at least start writing it down. You can call it the rational part. Now let's combine the two B terms. We'll get 5, b1, b2, right? The square root goes away, which is nice. Plus, square root of 5, and in parentheses here, we'll get a1, b2, plus b1, a2. So look, their product is also another number of the same kind. Irrational plus square root of 5 times irrational. So these numbers are closed under multiplication. 
and the word field is coming to my mind. But you need for one other thing for this to be considered a field. Maybe it's the only lecture ever where I'll use this term. And that is to, for the inverse to also be a number of the same kind. Let's see what happens here. Is this 1 over a plus square root of 5b? The inverse. Is that a number of the same kind? That's an interesting question. That's not as obvious as everything we've done so far. Is that a number of the same kind? Is that a rational plus square root of 5 times another rational? Yes, multiply it. And I think rationalizing is also the right term. Turn this into rational form. Get, in other words, get rid of radicals on the bottom. And you can do away with the radical on the bottom. It's very common trick for lack of a better word, is basically by invoking the square, the difference of squares formula. So multiplying it by a minus square root of 5b, and that's why the difference of squares is my, my favorite formula. Doing the same thing on top as well. And of course the magic of this formula is that the cross terms cancel, and you're left with a squared minus 5b squared. So yes, even the inverse is a number of the same form. So the family of numbers of this form is quite algebraically robust. Now let me ask you a question. Would all of this work just as well if I took any other number here? Square root of 7, square root of 8, would it work with any number? Well, let's see, is there a danger here? that this would be zero? Because if a and b are such, you see there's a minus sign here. That's no joke. Right? There's a danger that a and b are such, you know, very innocent a and b might work out in such a way that this denominator is zero. That would break everything. That would mean that some numbers don't have an inverse. So can that happen? Can a squared minus 5b squared, where a and b are rational, be zero? That's right. That's exactly right. So if this is, if this equals zero, then a squared equals 5b squared. And then yes, you can do what Vivian said, which is take the square root, and then you have a, I will even write a over b equals square root of 5, which would suggest that square root of 5 is a fraction of two rationals, which means rational itself, but we know that the square root of 5 is not rational. So no danger here. So we're good. So that's what must have occurred to Tartaglia. So he said, I'll bet you that this is also of the form a plus square root of 5b. And now it's just a matter of finding the right a and b. So let's see if it works. So how would you go about determining what the right a and b are to equal this quantity? Cube both sides. Sure. Let's cube both sides. Use the formula that I had here last time. Okay, but let's do it uh, in a smart way grouping things correctly. So because b in that expression has a square root of 5 in it, we'll combine this with this, and then this with this. Plus, now we're going to group the terms that have square root of 5 in them, and that will be the term that has this squared and this by itself. plus 5b cubed. Okay, so then this must be 2, and this must be square root of 5, in other words, this needs to be 1. So that's the system of equations. I'm actually, I won't be lazy and I'll write it out. a cubed
That's the system that we have to solve. And it's not a very attractive system to solve. So remember that. That when you extract cubic or whatever roots, order roots, in this fashion, you end up not with the sort of system you ever want to solve. It's very complicated. I'm not even sure if you can eliminate one thing. Oh yeah, you can eliminate B from here and plug it in here, right? I'll bet you, you might end up right back with this equation. I'm not sure, but that's what my intuition tells me. It would actually be interesting to, to see. So it's not an attractive proposition to have to solve systems like this. But here, we can guess one solution. And it's one half and one half. Again, there is no robustness to this guess. But see, but notice that if A is one half and B is one half, then it works. You see that? You get one eighth plus fifteen eighths. That's two. And three eighths plus five eighths is one. So one half and one half works. So fantastic. Isn't that nice? We extracted the square root while preserving the form. And then we could do the same thing here for this one. And everything will be the same except this will be minus 1. You guys agree with me? That will be the only difference. This would be minus 1, which means that 1 half and minus 1 half will work. Because you see how this is odd in B? So plugging in minus 1 half in B instead of one half would preserve this side but flip this side. So it's one half and minus one half. So plus one half. And then in what will become a pattern, these two quantities cancel and we're left with one. And so the formula continues to work even in this more algebraically challenging case. And this leaves some questions unanswered. For instance, would I always be able to extract the cubic root in this clean way? Would I always be able to do that? Is there a robust way for solving systems like this? I actually don't know the answers to those questions. I don't. And is it true that no matter what number I pick here, if this number did not come from some nice cubic equation, but just I chose a rational plus a rational times square root of 5, would I always be able to extract the root in the same form? And the answer is I don't think that's even true. I don't believe that that's true. So I believe that this involved a little bit of luck. So this isn't a knock on Tartaglia's formula that it produces a result that's not necessarily a nice rational number. There's no problem with that. We always knew that the solution does not have to be a nice rational number. So that's not a problem. It's just an open question that remains. Okay. But not as much of a